Hi, I'm Molly Soda. I'm an artist based in Brooklyn, New York, um, but also all of my work lives on the internet for the most part, so you can always find me there. I make work about um, performing the self online, memory, aspiration, consumer culture. Um, I'm primarily working in performance and video as well as web-based work, interactive work. All of my work lives online on various uh, social media platforms and the work kind of needs to evolve and change with the platforms themselves, etc, etc. I'm here to talk about La Turbo Abaddon's new piece, um, Club Zero, which involves a sort of co-creation or co-formation of three NFPs, which stands for non-fungible people. So three avatars are going to be sort of co-collaboratively um, decided upon by uh, the viewer, the interactor, basically anyone that wants to interact with the uh, work is able to have their input um, sort of affect the look um, or the outcome of these avatars. This show brings up interesting questions about how identity is formed online and how maybe what we what we choose to use to represent ourselves online, um, whether that is an avatar, whether it's our uh, physical bodies, however we manage that, how much of that is also sort of determined by um, other people, the people that are viewing our profiles or avatars or what have you. Um, I think about how identity often is, is formed by the people around you as well, um, whether that's online or in real life. Um, I'm thinking about how we sort of can even subconsciously kind of curate ourselves based off of who we think is looking at us. So there's always this, um, this imagined other on the other side of the screen that we are sort of considering. And it might be one person and it might be like a group of people. It might be a, an aspirational ideal of people that you want to be seeing you. Um, but we're sort of always looking at ourselves through the eyes of someone else or the imat like we're sort of imagining ourselves being looked at. Um, and I think that is particularly heightened online. Um, and it's also interesting to think about that through the avatar and, th and actually handing off that responsibility or that um, final say onto other people because it's something that we're sort of like kind of doing all the time like you know today when I film this video I am probably trying to give off a certain impression based off of what I'm wearing whether or not I'm wearing makeup what my backdrop is like clearly there is an impression that I'm giving to an imagined viewer um, and that is always subject to change depending on the context. And so it's interesting to sort of hand that off to other people and and kind of almost acknowledge that like, yes, our, you know, that there is like an active participation with within every community as to like how our identity is formed or how we project ourselves online and sort of like acknowledging that and just like giving the power. I also think, um, it's interesting to have people sort of co-create and collaboratively make this piece together. So there is a sense of um, there needing to be some sort of like cooperation or discussion. Otherwise, it can just fall into chaos and like what happens when too many people are sort of projecting what they want in a room. Is it easier when there's like a smaller group of people? Like, you know, the way that these avatars are shaped and formed and cared for is gonna be really different depending on um, who 
who's there, what their agenda is, how many people are there, um, is it possible to have a collab, like a fruitful collaboration with a group larger than five or 10 or 50 or 100? Like, where does it um, anchor, where does it sort of fall off? Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that shapes the actual avatar themselves. Um, it's also just, I think that there is a lot of emphasis um, I think that there's been a lot of emphasis in the modern sort of internet space on the uh, corporeal form, on using your real name, your 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 real face or whatever. I think there's a lot of um, we're very preoccupied as a group online with authenticity and relatability and being real, something being real, um, and I don't really believe in that necessarily. I think that that's sort of like a, a thing that we can't ever really achieve, um, but it's been interesting kind of seeing the move back to avatars or, you know, P4P, like there's sort of uh, a move back to representing our essence or ourselves. Um, virtually without needing to really attach like our our human bodies to it um and so it kind of reminds me of when back when I first started using the internet as a you know a tween a teenager like a young kid um you know I don't upload the, a photo of myself until I was maybe 14 but I was using the internet Prior to that, I just didn't have the technology to really, like, do that. Um, and so there were all these options for making sort of, like, these avatars of yourself or ways to represent yourself that were outside of the, the photographic uh, reel or whatever. And so, like, for example, like, doll makers or these sorts of websites, like, flash websites where you were able to create... Um, an avatar that re represented you or like your group of friends or whatever it was like there was this these ways of trying to approximate or at least have a way to represent yourself online that felt true to you um, and then I think when there was this shift over to I don't know um, over to the real name the Facebook's of it all the real name the real you when it became sort of a branded environment where we were turning ourselves into brands, um, that really shifted over. But then now I feel like we've shifted back into maybe the avatar being a little more important. Um, but it's also been highly capitalized and commercialized. And like, you know, it's funny to think about the way that like, these P4Ps are selling for like tons of money when really like at the essence and core of it like it's a doll maker website from 2002 um, and so it's it's kind of interesting how everything's sort of been on um, nothing's left untouched anymore by by sort of the privatization or the capital capitalism of it all what's so interesting also is that we don't know what these avatars are going to look like. It's not determined. There's no real outcome that we're aware of. And it's also something that's going to be changing over time and shifting. And it's sort of up to um, the other participants. Um, and I feel like we see an avatar as an extension of ourselves, uh, whether it is accurate to what we actually look like or not. Um, but they sort of act as a mirror in some way or as a way that maybe almost like we would like to be seen by others because I think in general being online there is a sense of um, yeah the, the, the ability to be online is almost a way of us trying to control the way that we are viewed by others, but ultimately in a lot of ways that's still not in our control. Um, it feels like enticing to want to do that, um, but 
they're also like as much as an avatar is an extension of myself or my online presence is an extension of myself it's also kind of an extension of everyone else as well because we're all sort of taking from it what we are projecting onto it or what we need so yeah it's going to be really interesting to um kind of invite a little bit of that chaos or kind of acknowledge um the weight that others have on our own identity formation online um and hand that off and really just like let them have that um so I'm really excited to see what how this turns out what happens